Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to the canyon. Welcome back to... It's sort of a quick view. It's sort of a dive into something we haven't done before. There's the guy. We just saw him in the 3D printed insert test. We've already done the the swaparoo. So he is on the the squid inserts. The the tusk specific squid inserts for the tusks. Very nice. But because of what is happening today, we didn't even bother to uh we're not uh, he's been sitting up in his uh, garage spot with his with his little uh, wheel, with his little wheel retainers removed because I knew they were going to need to come off. And before we get to why they're coming off, and I, I don't know why I try to, uh, like, it's it's in the thumbnail, right? What we should do is minus a battery. We should weigh them. We'll use our trusty RC four-wheel drive foam to pick them up because I want to know. We're going to, let's just go grams. We're going to go grams. Three, three, seven, nine. 3,379 grams. My brain can't, can't figure that out. 7.450, 7.45 pounds. So that is where a Phoenix sits. Phoenix are not light. They're just not. That thing's seven and a half pounds no added weight. If anything, I've taken some weight off because I cut some of the internal bits up. So his combo's probably not the lightest. Yeah, still, uh, 5.69 pounds with no wheels, tires. So, like, I want to say who was just on the scales recently. I want to say Yella weighs less than that RTR. So there's a lot of stuff going on there with a VFD twin. So he's a, he's kind of a portly boy, 5.69 pounds without wheels and tires, seven and a half pounds. And that doesn't include a battery. Those weigh, uh, those weigh four ounces. So yeah, I mean, he's seven and three quarter pounds as is. And as has been indicated by the thumbnail, but we're not, we're not giving away too much. Zoku RC. LCG. Not conversion, but I would say LCG kit for Vanquish Phoenix. And uh, we're, uh, I've, gone, I've gone through the box, the contents. Uh, I've, I've talked to some people. Uh, it, it, this is, this is full featured. Like we've got the whole color photos, the whole install guide. And from what I am told, and I believe it when I hear it, everything we need is included in the box. It has a replacement skid because the skid has four degrees of forward rate. It has replacement sliders for these sides because if you have a slider that mates up perfectly to a body, like what I'm gesturing to out of frame here, that's the edge of the slider right along there. So we need to adjust that to accommodate. So replacement sliders, it has a laydown, sir, offset laydown servo mount for the front. There is the servo mount. This is the front bumper mount. And you'll notice there's a little, you'll notice a little friend right here. Because when I say LCG kit, here are the, well, let me get the one so it's correct to frame. Here are the Zoku RC rails. And you'll notice the pin right there. So when I say conversion for Phoenix, oh, I mean it. This thing is specifically designed to fit this body. So we're LCGing it, and I am told, and I, uh, I have no choice but to believe what I am told, that I, I don't need to do anything. There will be fuel cell, a little stubby fuel cell. Uh, there are no, there should be no fabrication necessary. The only, 
what I would consider big change for me, and really for any, well, not for anyone else, but for a lot of people running a Phoenix, uh, it is built specifically for micro servos. So as viewers of the channel will know, I am A, not a fan of micro servos. And if I do have to use them, there are two choices. There's the EcoPower 640T and there is the Power HD TR4. And I will be using, I just ordered a second one. This was the uh, two-speed servo out of RoboKitty before it lost its two-speed. And then there's a brand new one to go with it. And why why do I do these over like a Reefs 99, uh, AGFRC A20 CLS, Torque CL0508? Well, because they are like... Sixty dollars fifty five. Uh, uh, NSDRC has the RS one hundred coming out. You're still looking at fifty to sixty dollars per servo. It's not a thing I'm generally happy about because for 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 these sorts of duties in a Phoenix, I run JX forty four oh nine MGs. Uh, these are fifteen bucks a piece because they are not a servo. You don't have to go whole hog on these servos. That's why I can't wrap my head around $60 micro servos because this servo I might use three times during, during a run. And this servo is engaged for like one to two seconds at a time. Like in a tip, in a full pack of driving, this servo might be energized for 20 seconds. I mean, this guy is working a lot. This guy is almost never working, and this guy is working on rare occasion. So before we get into the assembly, and uh, I, I would like to start off by claiming that I leafed through the instructions, but I have not. Um, I think first and foremost, I think what must be done logically. Put those in there, put those in there, put those in there, is we must indeed disassemble what of Argentum will be required for what I just put out of frame behind us. And really, I mean, we're going to have a full VS410 chassis with nothing in it. I think we need the, the twin. We need, obviously, the axles and the shocks. Oh, uh, it reuses the these guys because those are Phoenix specific. Let me just get started. To uh, I never, I never, <laughs> I never thought I'd be here. Uh, let me get started on tearing this guy down and preparing him for his brave new future as an LCG Phoenix. And uh, the thing I am genuinely most curious about because Argentum, the Phoenix already has all the advantages. Fusion Pro, 1100 ounce servo, squid inserts, 3D print in tusks. Like he's got a lot of tools. Uh, we're, we're trying to make the better best in this particular operation. And we're going to see how long it takes us to get it fabled, cobra fabled together. And it should just be a direct, it should be an unbolt rebolt. That's that's the hope, at any rate. So enough of that uh, babbling. There should be, like, music rising up in the back. We're going to do a little... In memoriam, we're going to do a little slow... We're going to do a little time-lapse of this guy coming apart. And uh, follow along. The, the last time I jumped in the Phoenix, my first Phoenix, will sit in his stock configuration. It is continually surprising to me that that was about that was about eight minutes, give or take, to completely gut that down, and it really does kind of stand out in my head. And so, like I said, you know, closing in on eight pounds, 
total. And uh, the bare chassis is 1.2 pounds. So this right here, I mean, there's, there's a lot of plastic. There's a lot, a lot of plastic. It is, it is heavy. I know ne it, it never really occurred to me how heavy it is. Oh, I missed a, uh, I missed a bit that we also need. But I hadn't put anything away, so we're still good. Panard mount is out. All right, so that should be, that should ought to be everything we need. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do some stuff out of frame here, like clean this guy up a little bit. Yeah, we're going to do a little housekeeping. I get the shafts cleaned up, get these cleaned up. And I think what I will do, because I, I know the rules, right? And the rules are this. Do not use this on stuff like this. But I, you, uh, God knows I can't help myself. So I am going to, I am going to get, here's what I'm going to do. I can't, I can't multitask to a level sufficient. So I am going to turn the contents of this box right here. I am going to turn that into this. I'm going to get to where we've got a, just an assembled chassis. I'm going to put that together. And then I will, I will, I will return because uh, something, you know, I go for that, you know, the, the full disclosure stuff of like working us through the process, but I would like to, uh, I, I feel like I can get my thoughts a little more collated if I, if I attack this independently. So, so for, forgive me. It occurred to me during these early stages of assembly, I've got like, I don't know, 10 or 12 screws in. Uh, first thing of note, this is like builder's notes. We're going to hit some, we're going to hit some builder's notes. They're uh, obvious. This is an obvious statement, but there is really, truly a difference between the quality of 3D prints from some that I've dealt with in the past and the quality of the 3D prints here. The screws go into these every bit as solid as if it was uh, an injection molded or a machine piece. Like I have no worries. Like when it, when I bottom out with the driver, I feel it. It goes, Ooh, it is solid. Usually you can kind of feel like you go or, and it's just going to spin out. So whatever this stuff is printed out of nylon, I don't, what do I know from 3d printing? Uh, it, it takes, it absolutely takes a screw that leads us to a, a plus minus here. The plus is the 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 bracket the the lay down servo mount was clearly not something just thrown together by someone who is trying to get something to fit, not not by any stretch of the imagination. Because and I will point it out after I get these screws in place, I had it in place and then I just a few moments ago removed it, and I will get to there. This is, it, uh, this is a builder's note for both anyone building these and a note for the gentleman who is printing out the instruction manual. So I will show you the page from the instructions post haste and I will say where I think the lazy man's intuitiveness kind of uh, triumphed over the manual. By the manual, it says install the, you know, I didn't take my axle apart, so it's making things a little more clunky. It says install this part, and then it says install this part, right? The the, the front bit. Uh, I, I, I don't recommend that. I recommend against that. What you want to do is install your servo into the bracket first, then mount it to the frame because this being a big chunky AGFRC direct power, it was like trying to fit a puzzle piece in to get that servo into the little groove. It's, it's really quite tight in there. It fits very nicely, but trying to shoehorn it in while it was already in the frame, 
forget if this was in place. It's, ne it's never going to happen. So I will not be installing this until the whole thing, the shocks are mounted and everything. That way I can get my servo horn on, get my servo horn centered. So this, instead of the front bumper mount, instead of being in step five, for me is going to be in step pretty much whatever the last step is because I want, I don't want to bolt it on and take it back off again. The thing I'm still so excited about is, is like, this is, this is, I might have to, it looks like the pin might be a little short. Oh no, no, it goes over the outside. No, it should be perfect. Uh, I'm not, I'm not digging into my fastener bins. I'm not doing, I'm using what came out of the box and what I am instructed to use. Like, uh, for step five, it says hardware from VP, the M three by 10. So, Everything you need should either be in your Phoenix or in the box, and they are labeled by letter. You got A, B, C, D, E. I think it goes to E. And it has been it has been breezing. Uh, worthy of note, though. And if you've assembled an LCG from other manufacturers, Artful Dodgers does this as well, where the screw for the upper link, you have to mount that upper link first, and it's in the instructions that way because once the side skirt goes on us, and then look how nicely the OD servo nestles in there. It's really well thought out, and I'm having a I'm having a grand old time. Uh, I just say before before I continue forward, uh, don't put that part in in step five. Set set it off to the side, and uh, put it in like effectively during finishing. Popping again and in, in again with the notes. We are we are to here. We're we're almost at slider stage. I found that with the incision 80s that come with the portal, uh, second hole, second row seems to be just about right. Uh, it feels grossly under damped now because there's so much lay down on the shock. Uh, but when I look at this thing, honestly, the, uh, the word draft tech keeps coming up in my head, but we're going to run it as it is right now. Much to my chagrin, I have had to resort to the bins at the current phase that I'm in because this is what I would call a launch edition Phoenix. So the new pan hard and steering links that come on Phoenix now are just straight. They don't have the little shoulder on there, right? Which gives you some adjustment range. My pan hard, as you can see, is too long. It's, it's pushing it way over to the side. And the steering drag link is way too long. Probably, well, let's get it centered. There we go. 10 to 12 millimeters too long. Now, I've had this issue with my Phoenix in the past where the links were not the correct lengths. So they have been changed. Now, the links that I took off probably would fit better because they were about four or five millimeters shorter. So it would move this over, which would change that link. So when, whenever you make a pan art adjustment, you're making a drag link adjustment because they, they change together. And uh, rather than deal with that, and seeing as we're, uh, we're leaning heavily into lightweight, I'm just, I'm building up some titanium links. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to put you guys, this should not, this should not be a problem for anyone else. I had this issue with these links in this chassis and should not have, like it was pushed way over no it was way over that way and i had to put longer anyway it was really one tire would stick out to like here out of the fender and the other tire would be like completely under the fender so i don't i don't know what was going on there for me this is an easy fix for anyone else it should be a non-issue like no one else should have a problem with them fitting unless you've got an og phoenix and then just be aware depending on your servo where that output spline comes out uh, you may indeed have to change either the length or the link itself like that right about and we'd say the horn is probably going to put it right about there yeah i would say probably mine is probably about 10 millimeters too long which isn't a problem i have material for that and i can get to that Ooh, it's starting to feel like something so here we are and where we've arrived is at the knowledge that I don't leave stuff alone, right? So I've just spent, oh, 30 minutes trying to basically undo all the stuff that I had done. Like Vanquish says, 
20 millimeter horns all the way around. Uh, 20 millimeter for dig, 20 millimeter for OD, uh, 20 millimeter for steering. Well, of course, I hadn't done that. I was running, here they are, I was running big, I was running big 24s on everything. Well, this wants the stuff that you have when you do it like the way they want. Like I had changed the linkages to titanium. Uh, I just go around and I change stuff. So I was having to undo all of my changes, which meant completely dig. No dig. We can see, well, you can see the drive, probably see the drive shaft better. See, drive shaft stops, drive shaft goes. Had to re completely center that. I'm running the same Amazon horn all the way around. They are not optimal. Like, like that angle is not the best, but there's two wheel drive, front's not spinning. There's big OD. There's little OD. So that one took very little work. It took quite a bit more. I had to completely recenter the dig. And I, I, I will say, I, I am somewhat ashamed to admit, after putting this together and seeing how nice everything goes together and how clean everything fits, ignoring, like, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do something about all of this. Uh, it really makes me uh, second guess my reluctance to spend the money on decent micro servos because like ugh, those things luckily I've got $30 sunk into those power HDs because I'm thinking man would that look good with some torque CLO 508s or uh, AGF or CA 20s basic or Wait a little while, get some NSDRC RS 100s. I think I've got the servo for the steering pretty well sorted out. It's the same horn in the front as well. The links are pretty parallel. That's, mind you, that's at full droop. We're probably sitting about like that. The weight has dropped measurably, noticeably, and significantly. Uh, it, it will be a constant quest here. Like I've got so much stuff that I've taken off that was on the other, that was on the old chassis. Basically, let, let me put it to you this way. <laughs> like if you had a Phoenix RTR, you could just, you would have been done. You'd have been done 45 minutes ago. You just bolt it all together. Now I am trying to accommodate like, I used to say that it was just a bone stock Phoenix is what Argentum was, but apparently it wasn't. Because, like, even just the stuff with the servo horns, the steering linkages, the panhard, all the, like, all the drive shafts, everything just, all the links just flew on. Getting this thing into a slider went like that. It literally took me 30 minutes to put this thing together. Now, getting it to accommodate my stuff, like... Nobody is running this big AGFRC 66 kg. Look at the clearance there. And that's just to try to get these links pretty well parallel. That's a big servo. If you were running a half height or just anything normal, I thought I had another normal servo out here. Uh, this guy is really tall. So he barely fits. But again, that's not something that anyone else is going to have to try to accommodate. That's just where I ended up. I am now to the point where I can get the end pieces bolted on. I can get, I think I brought some screws over. Oh, as I've been going, uh, I said that I wasn't gonna go screw bin, right? Well, we threw that out the window because it reuses so few of the big cap heads. I just started omitting cap heads and replacing them with button heads stainless button heads that way we're we're button head all the way around i'll have a couple screws to chase down during the the, the final cleanup and the final tighten down to make every the, the thing i have to do before we go out and wheel it because uh, everything the, the adjustability uh, I am in so in love with all the adjustability and the options, like the ability to slide the servo back and forth, the ability to move the panard bar. 
So this thing, like I, I like I said, I love a pan hard bar that is a turnbuckle because then when you make random changes, if I do indeed decide to throw longer shocks on here, and what that's going to come down to is the wheel. When we wheel it around, I am going to come to a what I assume will be a rapid determination as to whether or not I want a longer shock for more travel. I've sort of become a, uh, I'm starting to really love 80 millimeter shocks. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not, let's just say I'm not hungry to pull these 80s off of here. Once this guy is indeed assembled to the point where he is drivable, I, I will I will require an interlude of unknown length to do something about the wiring. I don't know if it'll be the final stuff with the wiring. What I would what I would like to do once we've got these couple screws in here is get it outfitted to the point where we can put the body on it. And then when the body is on it, I can get a much better idea of how much room I have. And I am not averse to, I, I would love to get that Praxis receiver box back in here and get a, and get all the stuff stuffed in it. I just don't know if it's going to fit. Like if I could make some little standoffs and fit it right there, that would be, that would be amazing. But in my head, I can't remember where the, uh, where the body starts and stops. I don't think I need to, uh, I don't think I need to put pins in those yet. Let's, uh, let's cram this in the center here. Where? Anybody out there know where I put the body? Ooh. Hey, we know that sound. So here's, oh, oh, that was a lot of, uh, that was a lot of sand in the cab. This, this is, this is where we wanted to, to end up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Straight through like that. And then with the body in place, I can line up the pinholes. And then I have to find the pins. Ooh. It's so good. It's so good. Pin. I know I dropped at least one pin. We'll worry about the front bumper later. All right. Look at... Oh. I, you know what? We are complete enough at... The, oh, you know what I just saw? You, I know, I know. I don't know if you know what I just saw, but I know what I just saw. So, we've got, we've got, we got this guy. And from underneath, there's just a big void. That is where that receiver box is going. I will fabricate something to, to stand off right there and put that bad dog... Oh... He told me that this is 100% infill, so I might be able to just drill a hole and put that through just like that. That would be amazing. If that would fit right there under... Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah. That's the whiz biz. I mean, I'm not, a, I'm not tied to this one, but I would love to just have that right there with all the wires tucked in it. Oh, but let's, uh, let's do an important thing. We need to rem we need to remember to subtract four ounces, which a AKA what is that? Hundred and ten ish grams. An amount. What was it? Was five 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 point seven? Was it five point seven pounds? Five point two seven. Half a pound. Oh, no, battery. Three quarters of a pound. That should be five pounds debt. 
this is a thing that I do. I, 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 I consider it a form of mental illness. Where I'm over here trying to do guess math. I can't, I can't see what I'm doing. Four, nine, seven. Over three quarters of a pound. And like I say, changing your ratio of sprung to unsprung is the same as adding unsprung. So we don't need to make these heavier. We just make all this lighter. So this should somewhat drastically alter performance. I don't know. That that's probably gonna look about that's gonna look about we'll see. And there's so many shock mounting positions. But yeah, and you take that body off, 4.2 pounds. I am uh I'm ready to clean this thing up. We are gonna go slap dash to get these wires put away. Oh, I can turn that off. I'm just gonna haphazardly zip tie stuff together so that nothing's gonna fall into the gear or get into, the, in, into a linkage. We're gonna put the wheels and tires back on this and we are gonna take it out there and we are gonna wheel it as it is. We're gonna find out if I got my shock position, positions way off. We're, we're gonna see what, we are gonna see what is what. But uh, I think this looks remarkable and I think we are ready to wheel. That panhard and steer link angle are so close to right. Just not quite the right horn. I have it on the back, but when it was mounted to the front, it was it was way skewed out. I don't have the right horn. I don't have the right horn. What I do have is a bag full of zip ties. We're gonna bundle all this together, maybe put a Velcro strap around it, get a battery in it, get the body on it, get the wheels on it, go. And we arrive ready for the maiden test voyage. Uh, post final assembly. Honestly, I would say something's something is weird. Some something's weird. Um, I would say the, sh the now a couple disclaimers here before we go out. You can see the angle of that rear shock, and that used to be straight up and down. So being laid down like that is softening the spring rate, and it 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 genuinely feels underdamped now. But we'll see. I also think that either the front shocks need to move back a hole, or the rear shocks need to move back a hole, because we've got a little more... The droop isn't evened out. Like, I got a quite a bit more travel vertical travel in the rear than I do in the front, like quite a bit more. The front is about right where the Phoenix started. The rear is, the rear is pretty substantial now, but th this is, this is what we're going to go with. I checked, I rechecked endpoints. I've just got two Velcro straps around all the wiring right in the middle. Uh, I love that the bed box exists because I'm going to something I will dig through the receiver boxes. Something is going to go in there. I don't know if it's just a matter of me making a plate that goes across the top of that rear servo mount or remanufacturing that plate. Like I say, this will be the this will be the wheel of the I keep wanting to say Zuko, you know the Avatar thing, the Zoku RC chassis. This will be the 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 run as as out of the box, right? No. I don't consider anything I've done a modification at all. Uh, I just had to get servo horns and stuff in there to make this thing work. Oh, yep. And see, it's a good thing I checked these things. It's a lay down servo, so. And now I got to uh, I got to reset all my trims. So I'm gonna <laughs> like. <laughs> so I, I I I will I will deal with that. And uh, when we meet again, oh, the other disclaimer I wanted to offer is if I repeat myself, I do apologize, but sometimes the camera, I push record for the first time on the start of a segment at like 7.30 in the morning, and then the next installment of that segment is like one o'clock in the afternoon the next day. So I have no recollection of what I said before, nothing. It's it's just stream of consciousness out of my mouth. And when you, when you wedge, what, 30 hours in between two sessions, 
I don't, I don't remember what happened. So, uh, let me get this. I had it all perfectly sorted out and never checked to see if the servo was reversed. So, once again, nothing to do with the kit. Everything to do with me. I'm going to take care of this, and then and then we're going to wheel, because i got, I got to see it go. Shocks being laid down. Uh, obviously, compliance is up. Why well, It's just soaking up everything it goes over. And uh, I think most surprisingly here is that I got the steering pretty much centered pretty quickly. So we might as well just hit the hits, hit the greatest hits. That, that got up onto there really fast. I don't know where we're bound. Let me just try this. I just can't pull, I can't pull it. Oh, it's just... Once again, when I, when I utter a phrase like untuned, there we are. Yeah, it, it, it comes down to that same thing that it always comes down to when I'm involved, which is when when I try to hit a line, I try to hit it the exact same way, and stuff is gonna is gonna stuff's gonna work different now. Yeah, a little more to the left was was the was the slot. Let's see how this is. Oh, just like ordinarily when I hit this cross right here, that passenger rear would get up like three, four inches into the air, but it, it basically didn't even rise off the ground. Oh, through there, like absolutely nothing. I gotta, I gotta remember it's, it's so much lighter. Like, I noticed that loss of weight so much. Yeah, you saw that front end really poke. Look at that. Yeah, no added weight, right? Uh, there, there was no added weight on this one. It was a full Phoenix. And we just dropped a solid pound. So it really wants to pop that nose end over. That's a ton of push. That is a metric ton of push. Can't even get off the, that's, yeah. The, the, the steer angle has, has suffered badly. Now that could just well be my setup, which is, I think I would be generous if I called it suboptimal. So I need to tune in to how light it's driving. There's a lot of drive, but for as much drive as there is, there's an absolutely equal amount of push. It, it's pushing really, really badly. And then the tendency to throw that weight back. I said it was under damped. And uh, I am gonna double down on that. I'm pull that up now. The uh, the front end is very skaty. Yeah, I've got. I have nothing. It's gonna it's gonna push and land in the same spot. Almost cleared the belly over that far side. Yeah, there's a lot of drive. There's so much drive, in fact. Just straight out. That's, that's not a spot that I would ordinarily be able to clear. So just straight over that, but I've lost. And the lack of steering, I don't think comes down to throw. I think it comes down to the fact that when we, when we, when we dropped the better part of a pound, so we're probably, I would say probably 14 ounces total. Uh, when we lost all that weight, I'm not 100% sure where the how that loss was distributed. He hasn't been scaled. But you can see that front end just climbing. Now you can also see that the forward drive is way up. 
And, as we well know, there's stuff that's correctable and there's stuff that isn't. And this is eminently, like, I, sh I should be able to tune most of this out. His ground clearance on those 80s is pretty impressive. Look, look, there's no no snagging, no nothing, just smooth down. So seeing as we're a different thing, let's try that straight gut shot approach. Daphne's here, right over there, where we can, we can try to work our way around that front end lightness. That bounce right there, is just, it's light, real light. But that, oh, it was, it was clawing so hard. Maneuverability, the maneuverability is up, but I'm, I'm I, yeah, I, I'm willing to quantify now that the loss of steering is just a loss of weight in the nose end. Like my battery used to be right next to the servo. So no matter uh, all other factors ignored, four ounces is right off the top of the axle, has been moved. And that is going to have an impact for sure. You know, like right there, see that tire high? And we can just get it to settle back in. But as it does have a lot of drive. It just, the front end is now light. So very skaty. It's getting out pushed by the rear end. And like I can't, I'm trying to get that driver front right there. I want that to bite and I, I don't have any bite. It just, it gets shuffled off at the same spot every time, but. Two hours later. What I was doing here was idly defining insanity. I was just doing the same thing over and over again, making no changes and expecting different outcomes. So, I mean, combine that with the fact that when I was whipping it around on the ground trying to self-write it, I probably edited that out so you don't get to see it. Uh, one of the shock caps on one of the incision shocks came unscrewed and the Panhard bar fell apart. So I went back to the bench and I started reanalyzing. I think I fixed the steering. As a matter of fact, I know I fixed the steering. It has more steer angle now than I think it ever has. And most of this was brought about by redoing the whole front end again. <laughs> I changed out the pan hard bar. I changed the, completely changed the length of the drag link. I changed the servo horn. Perhaps most importantly, I took the incision 80s off and put element 90s on because that's what I have in the bin for 90s. They also feel a little under damped. I think they're on 40 weight and I think they can genuinely go to 50. Can we bump? Not quite, not quite. Yeah, there's still a notable lack of just front weight. Like it's, it's really affecting the bite. And that is because if we were to put it in a position where we can see up under the hood, as it were, you'd be able to see there's nothing. The, the front end is just a big empty hollow now. So the weight, what weight there is, is very low, but we've lost, for my type of driving, we've lost too much weight from the front end. But there is an upside to this. For one, it's 100% tunable. For two, moving the shocks to these positions relative to that straight up and down that they are in a vanquish has dramatically improved handling to the point where the first thing I immediately notice is the loss of nose weight. Now, 
I don't think this loss of nose weight is going to be a long-term problem. And by long-term, I mean in the next time you see this, it won't be the same. Battery is currently Velcroed. There are, uh, if I did not point it out before, on the, on the skirts, there are little slots to put battery straps through. Very cool. See up in there? Gee, you think, you think we could fit a tiny little battery right up there on top of the laydown servo mount? That's what I'm gonna do. I think it will raise the CG a little bit, but it will raise the CG in such a way as I think it's just going to put drive down onto the front axle, which is where I need drive. The other option is spend $90 on portal weights. So I am going to attempt to remedy this lack of front bite vertical front bite in situations like this i've got a mountain of front bite like look how high let's just go up as high as we can absolutely stuck like look at look at that suspension action fully crossed up full compression passenger front full compression driver rear absolutely planted could stay there all day the cg has moved i can feel how much the cg has moved down it's not a little it is a lot but again here we go this this is a katana this is a well no katanas have a single edge what's a double-edged sword that that is a double-edged sword our cg is down our weight is down the ability to ascend. Uh, oh, we're gonna go to a setup right after this one that it will really show where that ability to ascend took a hit. I'm way up high on this line. Let's get that tire over. I, I wanna, I honestly, I wanna see where it cuts loose. Very light there. Should be able to put it down. Pushing, pushing. Okay, now if I cut back, is it gonna cut away or is it gonna stay down? I mean, look, look, look. Let's, let's analyze. Uh, all you geometrist, ge ge geometers out there, the top of the oblivion sign is level. So we're at what? 50 degrees plus? Like it's stuck to the ground. I could stay here I mean, I could flick the steering wheel and roll it out, but like it will hold. The problem is that we gave to get. And I mean, everything is, oh, just making me look like a jackass. That, that right there was a ridiculous, ridiculous. There was n absolutely no hesitation. That front end never tried to lift a millimeter. That section directly in between, I don't have my pointer, so I gotta, between there and there, look at the white balance. Th that's why I got the laser. Uh, the In between those two points, there's a section there that's just vertical. Look at, look at this. The, the Phoenix, I have long said that the Vanquish Phoenix is in its kit form, what I would call out of the box, one of the most, if not the most capable rock crawler. Like zero tune, just build it, fill your shocks, put your system in and go. This has elevated that. We are we are a, 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 we are a le we are a level above. It is. It feels like cheating, and I think that the sum total required to get it to where I where I quest to be is to move the battery right up there to the front. I'll figure something out. I'll make a little tray, and i probably I'm probably just going to make a little tray and servo tape it to the top of the servo bracket. 
and I am going to make it a little electronics tray. And then because the element shocks are a little wider than the incisions. Oh, look, look at, watch this front end. Yep. Oh. Look at this thing. Oh my God. That's insane. Did, did something did something settle in inside the rig or did something click inside my brain? Look at that. I'm one hand in this because my brain can't even control two hands right now. Let me, uh... Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, that is not a section that likes the 46%. But I we need to find a section. We need to find a spot where the 46% will be useful. Look at how stable. Look at the stability. Oh my god. What? I'm just questing for things that I can remember the Phoenix having problems with. I want to get this tire hooked up over the top as soon as possible to get that. It's absolutely glued. What and or how? That's that's bonkers. And I think with that little bit of weight move, or, 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 as we should call it rightfully, tuning. Yeah, I just want, I want more front bite. I want more bite in the front. That's me. I want it. I want it, and I'll get it. Now, would this, and could this, just be outright remedied by portal weight? Yeah. Yeah. And a portal weight would be a superior choice to what what I am going to do because it'll be unsprung. I'm going to spring it because well, I'm, I'm, there's power HDTR4s in there. Come on. But the the stability is nonsensical is the word. How how would I how would I summarize slash describe this chassis in a Phoenix? My Phoenix my Phoenix was effectively finished. It was complete. I didn't feel that it needed anything. It's like, it's like driving. Can I get off of this uh, elegantly? That that absolutely should have rolled into the pit. I want to. I want to buy that things. I want to buy things for it. Like. It it has become a crush. Like, maybe if I give it stuff, it will like me more. Uh, I want to put Dravtex on it. I want to put AGFRC micros in it. I, I want to buy it things that it probably, I want to give it knuckle weights. I probably want to buy it things that it doesn't need. And that's a dangerous situation. This thing will make you spend money on your Phoenix because it will elevate the level of performance to the point where it's almost like it's turned it into something else. I don't know uh, uh, <laughs> the, uh, to to take from a Parks and Recreation meme. I'm not a hundred percent sure what a cheater rig is, and at this point, uh, I'm afraid to ask. So I'll just say this vehicle. 
Okay, A, it just did the thing. I've said in numerous videos that nothing has been able to pull straight up over that ledge. Nothing. Vehicles with ruptures can't pull that line. Uh, there is no added weight in the front. This thing could be turned into a weapon. It is unfair. It was kind of unfair before, but it's just stupid now. The Zoku. Zuko. Zuko is the guy from the Fire Nation. Zoku is this LCG chassis kit for the Phoenix. Do I recommend this? How much do you like rock crawling? Like, I've tested and manufactured a number of LCG options in all sorts of different flavors. But someone here, someone involved in the, in the, in the design and the production of this, they genuinely put more thought into it than I do. I started midpoint. It just, it just, it drives so light now. It drives so light. Honestly, this little uh, bit of performance right here in the closing is at a level sufficient to make me go, don't, don't, don't mess with anything other than cleaning. If you could see what the wiring looks like, uh, you, uh, uh, it would fog your monocle. That's, that's, that's how bad it is in there. But it makes me want to just not mess with it until I put a good bit more wheel time into it. I grabbed four element shocks out of a bin, all gray spring, didn't mess with the oil, nothing. Bolted them on, went one hole higher than how it was on the 80s. And I, I get the, that can't, that can't be it. It's just that these, there's, there's, there's either more oil or oil that's more suited to it. Anyway, before we get into a long performance oriented discussion on tuning your vehicle, I, I haven't messed with link lengths. I basically tried to approximate what was coming off of the other chassis. Is that the optimal setup? No idea. We, we will get there. This is something. This is truly something. Look at it unload. It is, it has quickly become the most predictable vehicle I have. And there are 23 rock crawlers here of all different flavors and sorts. The predictability of this rig, how light it drives. Whoa. I, it might be getting colder, but I just got the chills. That's, that's all, that's all I got. I could go on for another hour and there will definitely be another installment, an update installment of this as I get it refined. This, I, I, I want this to, I don't think I can emphasize this enough untuned. Pick link holes that kind of set the pumpkin where I wanted it. Didn't touch a thing. Bolted it together. If you took your Phoenix RTR or your kit and bolted it into this, you you go up. You go up a level. It's like more grip in the tires. It's like more power in the motor. It. This thing, not to be indelicate, is like Phoenix Viagra. Definitely consider it, everybody. I'm not telling you to run out and buy one. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you the the, the opinions, the ramblings of a madman. Yeah, see, I th look. At, it should not be able to. It should not be able to. So uh, I will get it on the scales for the next one. I think the weight distribution, this thing is climbing in a way that it should not be able to. Because I think the weight distribution in my setup with no added front weight I, I would be surprised if it's 55% front weight. I really would. I'm, I'm thinking, honestly, 53, 47, 52, 48. And it climbs like a beast. 
So again, before I go on for another hour, oh my goodness, goodness gracious, uh, Zoku RC LCG kit for Vanquish Phoenix. Outstanding. I don't want to trend too much into hyperbole, but good grief is that, is that good. Real good. I have shock oil on my shoes from when that 80 mil shock popped open. Oh, wait till I get it cleaned up. Wait till I get it sorted out. Yeah, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, please do comment below with any questions, comments, what have you. Uh, drop a like if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't. Please do consider a channel membership. It helps us. It helps us out quite a bit. Uh, this is going to be the topic and the subject of my of my waking thoughts for some time. It's Passenger front is two inches off the ground right now. Drag that dig through. This guy. Oh my goodness. If you'd watched any uh, episode uh, prior to this, uh, I believe it was on Wheel and Wednesday when we talked about the, the potential upcoming Crawl Olympics. Oh my goodness. Everybody better watch out for Argentum, the Zokud. Phoenix because he is dangerous. Good grief, everybody. You know what? I'm going to shut this camera off. I'm going to drive the rest of this pack out. I don't ordinarily do that, but I'm going to do that. You go on about your business. Uh, definitely think about it. If you hadn't thought about LCG and your, uh, your, your Phoenix before, think about it now. And coming up sometime, I don't know when, but sometime in the near too far flung future, uh, I have no way of knowing yet. There will be a head to head. So if you're if you're on the fence, there will be a head to head of Zoku versus Rock Pirates. That's gonna happen. So so that will certainly be interesting. So look forward to that. But this oh so good. So good. We'll see you next time, everybody. Have a good one. Do your very best. Yeah, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Woo!